going on YouTube? In today's video, I'll be showing you how to use the Blink IoT platform to seamlessly create IoT applications using Raspberry Pi Pico W and MicroPython. Now in today's example, what we're doing is we're simply displaying temperature, humidity, and pressure data. We're creating a simple weather station using our BME280 sensor and sending it to this application in real time over the internet on this website, which is the, the Blink dashboard we have here. And by the end of this video, you will be able to create such a dashboard or a similar dashboard using any sensor or any data you want using the Raspberry Pi Pico W and MicroPython. And the only thing you need is an active internet connection because everything here is free to get started. So enough being said, let's jump into it, into the code and the dashboard, how to get set up with Blink and let's dive in. Okay, so the first step of this video is you simply want to create a Blink account. You just want to go to blink.io slash getting started and click create login or click login and go to create new account if you haven't created an account and just go through the process, it is self-explanatory. And the, next, the best thing you have here is you don't have to put in any credit card information to create a Blink account. It's completely free to get started and there's a lot of nice free services you can use to create really simple apps without the need for any credit card information. So that's really nice. And so once you have your account created, you're gonna be on this dashboard, blink.cloud slash dashboard. And you're gonna to want to create a new device. I already have one device here, which is the device I showed you at the beginning of this video. So we're just gonna mimic that, but we're gonna start from scratch. And so just click create new device and click from template here, that's fine. And we're just gonna choose the quick start template for the scope of this video. We're just gonna call it Pico W app. Okay, so we just go create. And now we have the skeleton to create our Blink app for now. We're just gonna leave it as is. Make sure you save this information on the top right here somewhere locally. So I'm just gonna copy that to the clipboard and save it locally. You don't really need the template ID and template name for this video. What you do absolutely need is the Blink Auth token because this is how you communicate with this specific app from your Raspberry Pi Pico W and it is the most important bit of information for your Blink app. So make sure you keep this secure, save it locally and we will be using that in our MicroPython code. So I'm just gonna copy that. And now let's dive into the MicroPython portion of this video and we'll come back to this later to customize the dashboard. Okay, so jumping into the MicroPython portion of this video, now I'm just gonna make some assumptions before going in. I'm gonna assume you already have MicroPython flashed onto your Raspberry Pi Pico W. You're familiar with getting MicroPython set up and running MicroPython code on the device. And you have some form of sensor. Today we're using the BME280. We're just gonna go over how I'm using that at a high level. We're not gonna go over the connections and that sort of thing. And the reason I'm using the BME280, which I'll link down in the description below, it's because it's a really popular sensor in this sort of application to show the weather station. So, you know, it's pretty cliche, but I think it's a good example to show because we have three forms of data that are pretty nice to display on a dashboard. And other than that, I'm just gonna assume you have an active internet connection. So once you have your environment, I'm using Thani today. You don't necessarily have to use Thani. You can use VS Code or PyCharm or anything else. And then you just want to um, get set up here. So the first thing you want to get set up with is the libraries themselves. So the main library we have to install is the Blinklib library. Now I tried to install the Blinklib library and MicroPython from the tools, managed packages in Thani, but that's not actually the right library and I had some issues with that. So I went and found the library code online and I just copied and pasted it into this blinklib.py folder in my lib folder on my Raspberry Pi Pico W. And you can do the same thing. So I'll link that code in the description down below and you can just name a file in your lib folder called blinklib.py and just copy it in there. As for my BME280, I just went to the manage packages in Thani and I just downloaded the MicroPython portion of the BME280 package. If you are using the BME280, you're gonna to want to do that. And that's pretty much it in terms of external packages. Now everything else is intro and packages, and I have this constant file here where I save my sensitive information, such as my auth token, which we already went through in the first part of this video, and my internet name and password. And the other packages, I have network, which we need to connect to the internet, the machine, which I need to initialize an I2C device, in this case, my BME280. And I use time to manage some intervals in my code. And of course, the Blinklib and the BME280 packages. Now, the first thing I do is I initialize the I2C object, depending on my STL and SDA pins connected to my BME280 or whatever sensor you have, followed by this Blink object here. So this Blink object, we simply have to pass the token we created in the create device into this right here. And I just saved that in my constants file. The constants file is simply a Python file where I saved some variables in this name here. So Blink auth token and internet name and so on. And the next portion we're doing is we're simply connecting to the internet. So if you have an active internet connection, it should be seamless. Just copy this function in. I'm not gonna go over the details of this function, but it is a really popular function used online to connect to the internet. And you just pass in your internet name and password as simple as that. 
Now, the most complicated thing of this code, and it's not really that complicated, is sending information to the, the Blink dashboard. So what we first did here is we're doing this in a while loop, so we're doing it continuously until we stop the code. And we have this BME 280 object, which we're using with the library, and we're just passing the I squared C object we created above. That's for BME 280 purposes. And we're just reading the temperature, pressure, and humidity data using recompensated data. And we're displaying it for our own sanity purposes. And we're also passing that data to virtual writes four, five, and six. Now we're calling the blink object we created above here, and we're calling blink.virtualWrite method to a specific, uh, let's say, channel here. So we define certain channels, four, five, and six. And we're gonna go back to the dashboard in a second and specify those gauges to be linked to these specific virtual pin channels. So I define, I define virtual pin four, five, and six in the Blink dashboard, and I also reference them in the code here as you could see, four, five, and six. That'll make a lot more sense in a second once we go back, once we go back to the Blink app. And we just pass the values we wanna send to that gauge. So I'm just passing temperature divided by 100 to get the temperature in degrees Celsius, humidity divided by 1024, and pressure divided by this value to get it in a percentage, and to get pressure in HPA. Now we run blink.run to maintain a connection with our Blink uh, clients. And then we have to continuously run this every uh, interval or so to maintain a, a data stream and maintain a connection. And then we just do time.sleep because we're doing this every second. You can increase the interval, but I think for the sake of our weather station, it is fine with one second interval. And that's pretty much it in terms of the code. Now we're not gonna run the code yet because we don't have fully set up in Blink with the gauges and the, the virtual pins. So we're gonna jump back into Blink and set up these four gauges with the correct information. And then we're gonna run the code. And if we did everything right, we should start to see those gauges move depending on the sensor data. So let's jump back into Blink here. Okay, so going back to Blink to set this up with the dashboard, we already created our My Pico W app device. What we simply want to do is click that device. And I already have these gauges here because I think I copied from a previous template, that's fine. So just go to the top here and let's just click edit dashboard because that's what we want to do. Okay, so let me just move my head to the top left there. So you can see here we have a nice easy ability to add certain components from this widget box and drag them to the dashboard. It already created three for me, I don't know why. I think that's what it does, it just copies a previous template you created. So let's just go ahead and delete those and start from scratch. And we're just gonna drag this gauge or three gauges into this display here for our app. And we're just gonna go one by one and edit what we want to see in the display. So the first one is temperature. So we could just say temp. And we can just say create downstream virtual pin. And oh, the other virtual pins are not available for now. That's fine. We'll change the virtual pins in the code. It looks like it doesn't know I deleted my previous one. So we'll just do virtual pin seven for temperature in this case. We'll call it a double because we want to display double precision. We want to see the decimal point of the temperature. The unit doesn't necessarily matter for this case, but we could just say Celsius. That's fine. You can also just put the unit in the name and it'll show that in the name. And the min and the max, we'll say negative 20 to 100 degrees Celsius. And we want two decimal points after the, uh, the integer. And that's pretty much it in terms of the temperature. So we could just go ahead and create that. So now we have a temperature gauge. And another cool thing we could do here is we can change color based on the value. So if it gets higher, it gets a darker shade of blue and so on. So let's go ahead and save that. Now we could do the same thing with humidity and pressure. So let's just go here, humidity. It is just a constant value between zero and 100. So we can just do, once again, create downstream. We'll call it humidity. We'll say percentage, oops, percent. And that'll be pin V8. And that'll also be double precision. And the units are none and it's just zero to 100. That is fine, we'll just save that. And we could do change color based on value again. And finally, we do the same thing for pressure here. So let's just go to, or let's just type in pressure and we'll type in uh, HPA. And then we can just go to create downstream again, virtual pin, it's assigning virtual pin nine, which is fine. We just have to go back to the code, use letters. Okay, let's just do, it's not liking that name for some reason. Um, let's do pressure HP A. Okay. Okay. 
So it likes that. I don't think I like the parentheses and the units. We just put it in the description. That's fine for the sake, but maybe we can find HPA here. I don't feel like doing that right now. And then HPA, we can say it's zero to, I don't know, 3000. I don't know what the maximum HPA is you can get from them BME to 80, but let's just say 3000. And we're just going to do once again, the double decimal point and create, and we're gonna change color based on value. It's really as simple as that. We just created three gauges and we have to go back to the code and switch the virtual pin to seven, eight, and nine. But just briefly here, you can see there's other components you can use, which are pretty cool. A bunch of free ones you can use for other types of sensors, such as slider, switch, and that sort of thing. But in this case, we're just using the gauges. They're really easy to set up with the virtual pins, as you can see, as we just did. Right now, it's just displaying random values. So don't get alarmed if you don't see your values right away here, because you actually have to save and apply and run the code to see an update in the value. So we're just going to save and apply this. So you can see right now is it's just zero because I haven't run my MicroPython code. So on the screen on my right, I'm just going to go ahead and run the code. Let me just change the the virtual pins real quick to seven, eight, and nine, because that's the new virtual pins as opposed to five, eight, and six. So five, seven, eight, nine. Okay. I'm just doing this on another screen real quick. I'm gonna run the code that we just went over. And hopefully if we did everything correct, it should send to this dashboard. So let's just cross our fingers, perfect. So this is pretty steady. I mean, the humidity doesn't really change unless I maybe blow on it. And pressure doesn't really change unless I maybe change my elevation or I'm in some sort of a chamber and temperature doesn't change unless I apply it to some heat. So we can see we're getting values on the screen, which is pretty cool. And let me try to blow at my sensor because that might change the humidity. So, okay. I think that slightly changed the humidity as we could see there, which is pretty cool. So we are getting updates in real time really easily with our micro Python code. And I am looking at Thani and I am displaying those exact values that I'm seeing here. So it all makes sense to me. So if you did everything right in this video, you should start seeing those values here. If you're not using the BME 280, whatever sensor you're using, you should be able to see them here. If you connected with your correct authorization token and you set up your virtual pins correctly and you run this code and you have an active internet connection, everything should work. If you have any issues, let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know if you like this video or you want to see something similar to it. I potentially will make a part two for this video because there's a lot more to blink other than the simple example here. So I thought it was really cool. And it's just a really powerful way to kickstart IoT applications and have nice dashboards. Mind you, you can also use the app on your phone. It doesn't have to be desktop here. I'm just doing desktop for the sake of video purposes, but the same thing you can do on your phone. And that'll be nice because you can actually have nice IoT apps where you can leave your house and view maybe some data about your house or other applications you are using. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, guys. Let me know what you want to see again in the comment section down below. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.